What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with the long-awaited Miami Mayhem Part 3. Now before I dive into that, there's a couple things I want to mention here. First and foremost, subscribe if you haven't already. What the hell are you waiting on? Press that button. Number two, hey, say hello to my little friend. Hey, the Goblin Grinder. I've been waiting to show this off to you guys for so long. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this. The Goblin Grinder is coming next month. In collaboration with Cubis, I am really excited to announce this. And you guys can find more details about it on my Instagram. This is beautiful. It is made of space-grade aluminum. The joints are magnet-based instead of metal-on-metal, metal, so your grinder will never get stuck. You won't have to clean it. And it comes with a lifetime warranty, boys. That's how confident we are. It is hand in gray. It is beautiful. Beautiful, okay? Um, this doesn't go through no giant factory machine, no. We're only making 200 of these because it's just two guys sitting there grinding these out. These are beautiful grinders. The most top quality, best shit we could find, and they're made right here in the USA, baby. Hey, look no further than the Goblin Grinder. You'll never buy another grinder for the rest of your life. I guarantee it. You'll never need to, at least, unless you're a grinder collector, then uh, be my guest. But hey... I'm so excited to share this with you guys. Thank you all for making this possible. This is something that I'm I'm honestly so excited to to announce and to to talk more about in the future with you guys. Cause like, holy fuck, dude, we got a gr yo. I accidentally I smacked my desk too hard there, and I I pressed the stop recording button, but I kept talking, so it was really fucked. You guys just lost a good moment there. Sorry about that. Okay, hey, either way, we got a fucking yo. I did <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> hey hey, I gotta stop. All right all right. Let's just get into the fucking video. We're getting chaotic here. Drop a like if you enjoy. Let's dive right into this video. So, this obviously, as most of you can probably guess by now, took place over the week of July 4th. Weekend slash following week, you know? I didn't leave Miami until, I think it was either the 7th or the 8th? I think it was the 7th, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually dead certain it was the 7th. But either way, back on topic here. So, we're sitting there on this fine July 4th evening where we left off at the end of the last episode. And in the last episode, at the very end, I'd mentioned how we had just gotten some bottle service, and, you know, we, we were kind of waiting on that, right? So we had just placed our order for the bottle service, and, you know, it was July 4th, so the, the room service was taking plenty of time this night, so we figured, you know what? Let's roll up some of this ball of berries. Let's evaluate the bag that literally said Zaza on it, all right? Sight unseen, I purchased this, mind you, for the tax per quad. A, a price that I don't even want to say again. It's disgusting, all right? But either way, I, I bought this ball of berries, and I was going to make the best of it, all right? Or at least try to get stoned. So... I bust out my pack of blunts, I gut a blunt, and I bust out the ball of berries. Now, this is my first time looking in this bag, and let me tell you, okay, for some shit called ball of berries, here's the thing, okay? It should do a lot more than have a mild aroma, okay? It had a mild, like... I guess you could call it a berry. It was more of a sweet aroma. I wouldn't really call it berry, but it had an okay nose to it, but it wasn't very strong. You know, most of the time when I'm about to smoke some pack, you know, you could smell those terps from a mile away, bro. You can get a whiff of that, and you already know what it's going to taste like. You even start to get secondhand high off that inhale if it's some real stank shit. And that's what I was hoping for out of this bag. Not expecting, but hoping for. And my hopes were absolutely destroyed as soon as I poured this shit out, right? So I'm looking at it, and I'm like, okay. Every nug is fairly small. I think the it would be pushing it to say the biggest nug in here is a gram, honestly. Like, very tiny nugs, right? So I'm looking at this, and I'm like, wow, I just got popcorn nugged for, like, 20 a gram. Uh, this is terrible. This is awful, and I got custied, all right? So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, you know what? I don't know anyone else in this town. My girl doesn't really have plugs like that because she barely does shit. She hits carts, dude. Do you know what I think about carts? You probably do if you're sitting here watching this video. Fuck them. All right, listen. So I had to go out and find my own connects in a city that I'd never been to, which, you know, in the past I've done that, yeah, many times actually, but in the past I didn't have as high standards for flour because I didn't have my med card yet. I wasn't smoking as consistently good shit. But now, the contrast versus what I was getting at home versus what I was smoking here was so apparent. It was so clear, it was not even funny. If you sold that ball of berries to, like, high school me, I probably would have been fine with it. Maybe not for that price, but quality-wise, I probably would have been fine with it. But current-day me? Nah, bro. That shit was not smoking right. So, 
I twist up a little blunt of this, and Ashley and I, we go back out to the balcony, and we're chilling out, and the sun's starting to set. It's getting nice and cool out. You know, there's a breeze. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a breeze. Let me step back. Like, uh, you could feel the wind, okay? Not a cool breeze by any means. We're still in Miami, but you could feel the wind, which is a nice change of pace, okay? So, I'm sitting out on the balcony with Ashley, and we're sitting there, and we're just having the time of our lives, right? I spark up this blunt after I let it air dry for a few minutes, because listen, my trick for rolling blunts is after I'm done rolling it, I don't take a lighter to it immediately. A lot of people do, and I even used to when I was younger, but after I, I kind of got older and, you know, I, I guess rolled more blunts throughout my life, you could say, I, I kind of caught on that that's not the strat, dude. You want to let it air dry for like five minutes and then just feel the blunt up and down. And, you know, if there's any spots that feel a little more, little more, you know, they need a little more drying than others, they're a little more damp than others, then, hey, dry, put the lighter to it, you know? But I found that letting it air dry for a few minutes before you take a lighter to it makes the blunt way more firm and it, it makes it smoke better and more consistently, right? There's not as many canoes or anything. Like, I always get an even smoke when I let that happen. So, there's your little goblin pro tip of the day. But either way, back on topic here. So, we got this ball of berries twisted up in the blunt and I spark it up and take a hit. And what was really interesting about this bud is that the nose to it, you remember how I mentioned that mild berry smell that it had? The taste did not correlate at all. The taste was very earthy, which caught me way the fuck off guard. I was like, bro, did we put some of the truffle cake in here? Some of the maiden made? Like, like, what is in here, dude? I, I was doing a double take. But sure enough, this was a ball of berries exclusive blunt. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, fuck, dude. The bag was labeled Zaza. We'd been lied to, dude. We'd been absolutely tricked, right? They're laughing their way to the bank right now, okay? We still had that pre-roll, which I haven't even gotten to yet. We'll talk about that later, right? So we're smoking this, this blunt of ball of berries. And we're just kind of getting through it. And you know what? It's better than the truffle cake. I'll say that. Truffle cake was like a $20 eighth. This should have been... No, truffle cake should have been a $20 eighth. Pardon me. This should have been like a maybe $35 eighth. Maybe. No, that honestly, that might even be pushing it. Like a $30 eighth, honestly. I, I, I was getting a little little ramp a little ahead of myself there if you will but either way this was not not what i was looking for and the ball of berries I had a quad i didn't even have an eighth bro and i paid more than that per eighth of the quad anyway so it doesn't matter i don't want to talk about it anymore i'm traumatized i have ptsd how do you think i got a medical card this incident gave me ptsd it's how i got it either way back on topic so i'm smoking this shit and i'm just like oh fuck bro this is terrible right like this is awful so I pass this over to Ashley. I'm like, hey, you know, you take some hits. We're passing it back and forth. And we get about halfway through the blunt. And our little doorbell on our hotel room goes off. So I pop up. I grab my wallet. And I walk over to the door all fast as hell, getting ready, getting excited for our bottles. Because we ordered ourselves a nice two bottles of rosé. And I don't I don't remember the exact brand name. I remember it was like a... The bottle was shaped very... Dis, like, it was a distinguished shape. It was almost like the shape of a bottle of Henny. Like, it was a very strange and unique shape, right? But either way, uh, we're, we're getting these bottles, right? The two bottles come, and it was the, almost the same room, room service lady every single time. Like, there was one of two people, and about eight out of ten times where we get room service, it would be this one lady who, she was a very friendly lady, I always tipped her better than anyone else who came to our door, nicest girl ever, but she was not, like, very fluent in English. Maybe she was, but she just preferred to speak Spanish, and she didn't really compute or look at me and assume that I couldn't speak Spanish, which, how kind of her, but look at me. I can't speak Spanish. I play World of Warcraft, sweetheart. There's no chance, okay? I'm a nerd. I'm a fucking loser, all right? I don't speak that, all right? But it didn't matter. Ashley to the rescue. She comes over. She's speaking that lingo over my shoulder once again. She did it, like, the first night we were there. She's doing it again. I'm like, yo, honestly, that's sexy. I don't even know why, because I don't even know what you're saying, but that's just kind of hot, and I like it a lot, all right? So keep it up. So... She's doing her thing, talking to the girl, you know, they're kind of laughing at each other. Oh, have a good night, all that stuff, you know. And I, I just do my part. I just sign the tip. I write my tip into the receipt. I smile and wave, boys. Hey, I play my role in that scenario, okay? So I, I get the deed done. We get our bottles. And she was so sweet, dude. She'd always come in. She'd ask us where we wanted the bottle. She'd pour it. She'd ask if we wanted glasses poured out. I'd always be like, no, because I always knew she'd pour them too light. And then she'd judge us if she saw me, like, top it off before she left the room. So I was like, no, no, no. We'll hide our alcoholism. Thank you. We'll pour it ourselves, right? So, well, granted, we didn't hide it very well because we got room service literally every single night. We There was not a single night we stayed at that hotel that we didn't get bottle service. So... Yeah, we were some chronic alcoholics during that trip, and I was a cocaholic, but we'll get to that part later. So, 
our bottles come. Our our newfound room service friend leaves the room. Tipped her great once again. I I literally I would give her like an extra like fifteen percent over everyone else. She was great, dude. She was so friendly. She'd always come quick. She she was the only one who would come all the way into our room, dude, and like offer to pour the shit, even though she didn't have to. That was that was very good service, right? I'll never forget. So, either way, back on topic. Uh, we're we're getting ready to have a real hoot this evening, boys. We got the rosé now, so the blunt is irrelevant, but we still got half the blunt. So I grab one of the rosé bottles, Ashley's got two of the glasses, and we go sit out on the balcony. And I'm like, you know, it's one of those kind of evenings. I undid every single button on my Hawaiian shirt. I'm sitting there on that balcony, buttons all undone, stomach hanging out. I don't give a fuck. We're way high up. They can't even see us. Fuck you down there. Hey, it's July 4th, baby, and we're having a hoot. So I pour up a glass for myself and a glass for Ashley, and I pour them to the fucking brim. We do our little toast, our little happy July 4th, you know? We're sipping on some rosé, you know? I I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it was Ashley's idea, but it could have been my idea, too. I don't know. It was a mutual decision. We were like, yo, once we got a few glasses in, we were kind of buzzing, and we were like, yo, let's take some, like, selfies and shit, you know? Let's do some shit. We took took a bunch of ridiculous shit, dude. We we took the drunkest pictures. We had, listen... 95% 95% of them, we were so drunk that at the time we looked good. And then looking back at it, I look at this picture and I'm like, wow, we're both sweaty and drunk. <laughs> like, wow, I don't even remember that one, you know? So either way, we're out there doing our doing our drunk moments on the balcony, taking some cute little selfies together, you know, that kind of thing, having a hoop. And we noticed that the half of the ball of berries blunt was put out and it was still there. Ashley put it out and just left it on the table. So I'm like, yo. How did the wind not blow that away? You know, there's a slight breeze coming in now. It's, it's God's plan, dude. This is a sign. We got to smoke this shit right now. Ashley's like, say yes. Yo, let's spark it up. So we spark up the second half of this ball of berries. I'm a couple glasses in and I'm, I'm enjoying it a little more now that I'm drunk, but not really because I'm getting crossed. It's more so just because I have something to smoke while I'm getting drunk, you know, which also that, that brings me to another point. Yo, why does Miami in particular have like very good disposable vapes? I hate disposables 99% of the time because everywhere I've gone when I get one, they taste like shit. They're never true to flavor. They don't hit hard. But down in Miami, they had these kind of disposables I'd never tried before. And my vape batteries were dead. I didn't feel like toting juice around. So I was like, yeah, I'll just grab a disposable and I'll charge my vape when I get home. My box mod, right? So we went and grabbed these things. A little off topic here. They're called fumes. Have any of you guys heard of these? Fume Infinity. These shits smack low key. They're, they're actually pretty good. I think I got this purple one. It was really good, dude. But either way, back on topic here. So we're smoking this blunt. I'm feeling pretty decent, right? I'm hooting. I'm hollering. I'm, I'm feeling good. I got these glasses of rosé in me. And we're sitting out on the balcony. And by this point, the sun's down, right? It, it is dark out. It's nice out. So the fireworks are bound to start any minute. So Ashley and I are just sitting out on the balcony waiting for the fireworks. And we're sipping our rosé. And we crash the first bottle. Or we crunch it, crash it out, whatever. Dude, whatever term you want to use, okay? We annihilate. We fucked the first bottle. We fucked on that shit. Straight up. No consent. Uh, Scratch that. Cut that part out. Hey, back on topic. So we went crazy on that shit, all right? And I go inside and grab our second bottle and bring it back out. Now, this is where things start getting rowdy, okay? We got the second bottle out. And... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm not going to lie, after the second bottle came out, things got a little hectic. So we crack open the second one, we're pouring ourselves some more glasses, and the fireworks start happening all around us. There's no, like, official set direction to be looking for, you know, to, to see the fireworks from our balcony. It was kind of just like, look all around, there's fireworks going off at different times of varying size, you know? But what seemed to be like, I don't know if it was like city ordinated or what, but what seemed to be like the main fireworks of the evening came on about an hour after everyone else's fireworks started going off, right? About an hour after sunset or two hours or so, give or take. It was, I don't really know. I was drunk and my concept of time is completely warped. So just disregard all that. But either way, we're sitting on the balcony. We're drinking this bottle and we're drinking this shit expeditiously, dude. I'm fucked up. And Ashley, listen, she doesn't drink nearly as much as me. So I'm plowing through these bottles, but she did good. I will say, she can hang. I was impressed. I was very caught off guard. I was like, you know, you're a thin, you're a small girl. How are you doing this? But she could hang, and I was very impressed. I said, okay, I respect that. I respect that. Even though I drank, you know, probably three quarters of each bottle, and she drank one quarter of each, we drank two bottles. That means half a bottle for her. Color me impressed, all right? Most girls, hey, quarter bottle of rosé, shorty's face down, vomiting on herself, all right? And I have to hold her hair out of her face. No, I don't want to do all that. No, no chunks in my, no, no thank you, okay? 
she could hang. Didn't have to do that. All right. So, well, except for one point of the weekend, but that was that was out of love. You know, that was like, you know, I held her hair out of her face, you know, because I cared about her, you know. But either way, back on topic. So, we're getting lit throughout this night. And we've got maybe, we're, we're down to maybe the last like half to quarter of the second bottle, right? And the main event fireworks start going, you know, and we're kind of, we're sitting there, you know, it's a little romantic kind of scenery, you know, we're up high up on this balcony, it's beautiful, the breeze is going, so we're kind of holding the hands a little bit, and hey, me being a drunk sleazebag bastard, hey, let's just say, I'm not gonna get too detailed here, but let's just say I got like a little, like, you know, a little too handsy with it, okay? One thing led to another, you know, she's sitting in my lap, I got a little too handsy with it, you know, so um, we had to relocate inside due to the other guest's and the people in the building across from us on the balcony who I made dead eye contact with. Uh, that is when I made the executive decision to move inside. I said, you know what? This is going nowhere but downhill. Let's get inside, all right? So, <laughs> before we end up on X videos. So, we went back inside. And then after that, it was all a hoot and a holler. We're sitting inside, and we still had a nice... There was this little, like, table with, a like, a bench chair in the corner, kind of by the balcony, so we could open our curtains and be tucked in the corner where no one could see, but we could still see out. It was perfect. So that's exactly what we did. We sat at this table in the corner. You know, we're chilling out. We're just enjoying the fireworks from inside, and I start rolling up another blunt, because at this point, I'm like, yo, we got the ball of berries. But as I got this blunt, I realized, wait a second. We've got the fucking pre-roll. What am I... What am I doing with the fucking blunt? So, I just, I say scratch that blunt. We had plenty more packs of wraps. Scratch that blunt. Fuck it. To hell with it. Off with its head. Don't need that shit, right? So, we pull out this pre-roll. And like I mentioned in the last video, there was allegedly, okay, 0.25 of hash, 0.25 of rosin, and then 1.5 grams of flour in this pre-roll, okay? So, I pull it out, and indeed, there was some form of concentrate in there. I don't know about the hash part, but there was definitely concentrate. But hash has, at least in my experience, you know, some of you viewers from over the pond probably have more experience with hash than I. But in my experience, hash has a very distinguishable taste. Like, no matter what, you'll hit something and know, like, oh, that's hash. Oh, there's hash on that, you know? But when it comes to this, there, there, I tasted the resin, and that's about it. There's no distinguishable, like, oh, that's not really quite flour. That's That tastes like some hash, you know? But And hash has that kick to it, too. Hash, it, it feels like you dropped a cannonball in, in the back of your throat, at least in my opinion. Like, that shit hits, dude. I cough a lung up after every hit of some hash, dude. It doesn't matter how good or how bad it is. My lung is coming out of my system, okay? One of them, at least, right? So, I'm sitting there, and I hit this joint. We spark it up, and I guess the only positive thing I could say about it was that it did burn fairly slow. It burned fairly slow, which I'll give it credit for that, but... The rosin that they use in it, you could tell, it just wasn't very high quality. It, it There wasn't really a lot of terpenes to the whole experience. There was not a lot of flavor. And it was more of just like a, kind of like a strong lung punch inhale. It tasted like, like it just reminded me of some shit I would have smoked in high school, honestly. I remember back in high school, I used to have a Cody's older brother. He used to sell these like pre-rolled backwoods that had pretty much the same thing in them, but they were fatter. And those shit smoked I'd say comparably, maybe a little better even, to these, right? But I, I I don't remember what they were called. I'd have to go look. But what the fuck were those things, dude? Oh, my God. I Do you guys remember when, like, the pre-rolled woods were, like, a huge fad and everyone was, like, buying them and flexing them and shit? Oh, my. What a time to be alive. But down in Miami, pre-rolls are alive and well, I guess, because I paid a lot of money for this one. I don't remember off top exactly how much it was. I'd have to go back through my DMs with the person. But I think it was, like, a... What, a 60 or $70? <laughs> oh, no, dude. I don't want to talk about it. Everyone, shut up. I don't want to talk about it. Shut the fuck up. So we smoked this pre-roll. And this was probably the only thing out of the three items I bought that actually got me reasonably high. I will say that. Granted, I was drunk, so I was crossed. But I noticed a difference after smoking this one. So this one, I was like, at least, you know what? I got stoned. It's just sad that it took 0.25 of hash, 0.25 of rosin, and 1.5 of flour to even feel anything. That's kind of depressing, but you know what? I, I feel a difference, and that's good enough for me. So we finished smoking this joint. It was a nice, slow burn. We went back out to the balcony to smoke it, and it was nice, dude. We, hey, listen, we we were feeling much better. We we were under control at this point. We weren't worried about the other people on the balconies, you know, seeing us, because we, we'd handle ourselves, you know? We, we said, you know what? We're not going to let that happen again. We're just going to go out and smoke like civilized people, all right? So that's exactly what we did. 
We went out there. We smoked like civilized people. Went back in the room absolutely shit-faced. And you could probably figure out the rest of what happened that night. We're going to save the next day for the next episode. Hey, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Drop a like if you did. Goblin Grinders, stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram for more details. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, gamers.